A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, starting at the 7th verse. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 84. Let us read it together responsively by half verse. How lovely are your dwellings. My soul has a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. Indeed, the sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will be always pray you. Blessed is the one whose strength is in you. And whose heart are your faith. Who going through the valley of misery uses it for a well. They will go from strength to strength. And God of God have you seen my eyes. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Behold, O God, our defender. For one day in your courts, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. For the Lord God is a light and defense. O Lord God of hosts, The New Testament lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespass, trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promise of holy with the promised holy spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory the word of the lord Our second hymn is hymn 105, hymn 105. Christ, according to St. Matthew. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the, Lord, where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, 
And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son fulfilled the covenant of circumcision for our sake and was given the name that is above every name. Give us grace faithfully to bear his name and to worship him with pure hearts according to the new covenant, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. <coughs> We just prayed the collect from January 1st. Before we move on to our lessons, I want to hi highlight a holy day you may have missed this last week. January 1st, New Year's Day, is always the feast of the circumcision and the holy name of Jesus. January 1 is eight days after Christmas Day. In Leviticus 12.3, the Torah requires that a male Jewish newborn be circumcised on the eighth day. Traditionally, this is when a Jewish boy is named. And that's what happens with Jesus, according to Luke 2, 21. As instructed by the angel, Mary and Joseph named the boy Yeshua, that is, Jesus, at his circumcision. With his circumcision, Jesus is brought into the covenants of Israel, the covenants God made with Abraham, Moses, and David. There is no other holy day of the church calendar that says as loudly, Jesus is Jewish. He begins his life as a Jewish man, dies a Jewish man. He is resurrected as a Jewish man. Sometimes I hear people say, yes, we know Jesus was Jewish. That was can mean two things. Jesus is still dead, or Jesus is alive, ceased to be Jewish at some point. Did Jesus cease to be Jewish when he died? If he still bears the mark, marks of his crucifixion, as Thomas verified, then he still bears the mark of his circumcision. He still bears the scars of our salvation, and he still bears the mark of his Jewishness. Why does this matter? That's a sermon for another day. I will leave you to contemplate that for now. Today's gospel lesson tells us the story of the Magi, how they traveled from Orient land, bearing gifts to the newborn king of the Jews. In the Magi, we have the first non-Jews to acknowledge Jesus' kingship and to worship him. The Magi gave Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yet what the Magi did not quite see, what Mary perhaps could glimpse, were the gifts that this baby boy was carrying for humanity. In our Ephesians passage, Paul lists for us gifts that the Father has for those whom he has adopted. Ephesians 1, 3-14 forms the longest sentence ever found in ancient Greek. One commentator called it the most monstrous sentence because it runs on and on. We may not see the run-on in our versions as most English translations break up the passage into several sentences. But Paul used to dictate his letters to a secretary and sometimes Paul would just get carried away with what he was saying and his sentences would run on. That poor scribe, he must have been really good at shorthand. John Stott says, as Paul dictates, his speech pours out of his mouth in a continuous cascade he neither pauses for breath nor punctuates his words with full stops. Commentators have searched for metaphors, vivid enough to convey the impact of this opening outburst of adoration. It's a golden chain of many links, 
a kaleidoscope of dazzling lights and shifting colors, a snowball tumbling down a hill, picking up volume as it descends, a rhapsodic adoration comparable to the overture of an opera, which contains the successive melodies that are to follow. This section of Ephesians is a benediction, a blessing. But Paul is not blessing his readers. No, he's blessing God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. What we have here is liturgy, not unlike the benediction said in a synagogue. For what is Paul praising God? For the multitude of gifts he lavishes on us in Jesus Christ. This passage is very rich, and we have a short time. This is the word of the Lord and set before us for the start of the year, so please forgive me if I go a touch longer than normal. After the year that was 2020, what is God saying to us as we start 2021? God says he has many gifts for us in this Christmas season. Yes, friends, those of you who have already taken down your trees and put away your nativities, it's still Christmas for a few more days. God has many gifts for us. One of those gifts is not the promise of a good year. Nope, sorry. What he does promise us is eternal life in Jesus Christ. When does eternal life begin? Eternal life begins now. God has bestowed to us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God has opened to us every benefit of knowing God and everything we need to grow spiritually, whether we are in a pandemic or not. God has given us everything we need to know him, to engage with him, to grow into likeness of his son. That is eternal life. Notice I said grow. Grow into the likeness of Jesus, not instantly become. So let us be patient with ourselves and with each other. Let's go over this list of Christmas gifts that the Father has given us. Verse 4. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. This resonates with Revelation 13, 8. The Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. God chose to make us holy and blameless before he made the world. Before Adam and Eve sinned, the atoning sacrifice was prepared. God predestined the sacrifice that makes us holy and blameless. The sacrifice that does not just forgive our sin, but transforms our sinful nature into Jesus' divine nature. Verses 5 and 6. God also chose ahead of time to adopt us as children through Jesus Messiah. This choosing was through his grace. What is God's grace? It is kindness. He lavishes us with kindness through Jesus the Beloved. Have you ever had a friend that just lavishes you with kindness? Always pays for the meal, always has a gift, always has an encouraging word? We get embarrassed by that. Maybe because we know we can't properly reciprocate. We realize we don't have it in us to be that kind back. That is the grace of God. It's a level of kindness that humbles us because we are too poor to be kind back in the same way. Verse 9, this grace, this kindness reveals to us the mystery of his will. Can we know the mind of God? Not on our own. But God shows us his mind, his will, and how he treats us in the Messiah. God's heart is for us to know him as he knows us. 
His gift is that he made a way for us to know him. He cleans us up so that we are presentable to approach his table and to approach his throne. Verse 11. In Jesus, we have received an inheritance. What are we inheriting? The same thing Jesus inherits. Heaven and earth united under one king. Paul says in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit testifies that those of us in Christ are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Fellow heirs? This verse always bowls me over. That's beyond kindness. The phrase embarrassment of riches fits here. We are embarrassed, we are humbled by this sort of inheritance. The verse goes on, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Are we suffering? Just about all of us suffered something in 2020, are still suffering. It's okay to admit it. Some of us lost dear ones. Some of us lost jobs. Some of us lost smaller things. It doesn't mean those things don't hurt. Allow yourself to mourn the losses of 2020, big or small. That suffering, the suffering of broken relationships, of persecution, of sickness, that suffering joins us with Jesus. And then he lavishly, he lavishly shares his inheritance with us. We inherit so much in Jesus. Jesus shares his heavenly and earthly inheritance with us. How wild is that? But the clause in the will is we must suffer with him. We are disciples of the cross. Yes, the cross is the instrument of our salvation our healing, our restoration, of our sanctification. But it is still an instrument of torture, of pain, of execution, of death. Pick up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. The good news is that like Jesus, we have a hope and a joy set before us. On the other side of our suffering is the resurrection. Until we get there, Jesus walks with us in our suffering, sharing his divine life with us. Verses 13 and 14. The final Christmas gift on Paul's list is the down payment on our inheritance, the Holy Spirit. When we hear the gospel and believe it, when we trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is how Jesus shares his divine life with us now in this broken world. It is by the Holy Spirit that we are able to love our enemies, able to forgive 70 times 7, able to eat at the heavenly banquet table. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we will receive our portion of Jesus' inheritance. When? When do we get this? When the heavenly kingdom of God is once and for all established on earth, as we see at the end of Revelation, when heavenly Jerusalem meets earthly Jerusalem and heaven and earth are renewed. There are still many promises in the scriptures that await their fulfillment. Like no more tears, sword being converted into plows, the nations at peace with one another under the son of David ruling from Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit assures us those things will come to pass at the end of time. To recap, the Father's Christmas gifts for us in this new season are every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, which enable us to grow spiritually and to know God. He has gifted us the forgiveness of sins. He has gifted us adoption as children. 
Kindness on a scale that can only humble us. He has gifted us with a revealing of his own will and his purpose, pers person and his purpose. He has shared with us Jesus' inheritance when we suffer with Jesus. And he has given to us the Holy Spirit, that down payment on our inheritance, our comforter, the minister of Jesus' divine life. Let us with Paul bless God for the multitude of sins he lavishes on us in Jesus Christ. We bless him whenever we, able, we are able to eat the Eucharist. The word Eucharist is from the Greek for thanksgiving. So as we come today, let us give thanks by sharing in that meal. But for right now, as little children, let us offer a simple blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.